All right, you're recording, you're good to go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the February meeting of the Pyrenees Shire Council. As the meeting chair, I give my consent for this open council meeting to be live streamed, recorded and published online. Anyone who is invited to read out a question or a presentation will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream and recording. The chair and or the CEO have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. The stream will stop prior to the closed section of the meeting and will recommence for the conclusion of the meeting. Public is able to view this live stream via our website at www.pyrenees.vic.gov.au. Should technical issues prevent the continuation of the stream, a recording will be made available on our website. Our opening prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we ask you to give your blessing to this council, direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of the Pyrenees Shire. Amen. We acknowledge the people past present of the Wadawurrung, Jajaburrung, Eastern Mara and Wachbolic tribes whose lands form the Pyrenees Shire. We pay our respect to the customs, traditions and stewardship of the land by the elders of these people, of these tribes on whose land we meet today. Seeing we're all here, there are no apologies. Uh, any councillor or officer have a notice of disclosure? Seeing none, we'll move on. We have a recommendation that the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on the 18th of January 2022 and the closed meeting of council held on 18th of January 2022, as previously circulated to councillors, be confirmed. So moved, Mr Chair. Moved, Councillor Vance, seconded, Councillor Keogh. All those in favour? Carry. Is there any business arising from those minutes? None, thank you. Question time and public submissions. Members of the public are unable to attend the meeting in person. However, questions and submissions can be submitted online through Council's website by mail or hand delivered. Person can ask a maximum of two questions at any one meeting on any topic and the question and responses shall not exceed five minutes. Questions or submissions are to be received by 12 noon on the day of the meeting. Questions or submissions are read by the chairperson during public participation. The chairperson or councillor or council officer to whom the question is referred may immediately answer the question or take the question on notice for the next ordinary meeting. I have one question provided to council. It was provided by Neville Grills from Landsborough question is, as the land management plan forms an important part of the case for a planning approval, are there any council checks that the LMP is implemented? Mr Gowans. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, and thank you, Mr Grills, for your question. Uh, Mr Grills, you're correct that a land management plan and all the document that forms part of a planning application is important as it assists the assessment of how the application meets the requirements of the Pyrenees planning scheme. If a planning permit is issued, it is incumbent on the applicant to adhere to the conditions set out in the planning permit and the endorsed plans. This may include reference to implementation of a land management plan uh, provided by the applicant. Council will check on adherence to the planning permit conditions to assess compliance with the planning permit. Council priorities comply Council prioritises compliance investigation where impacts are likely to be significant. 
Thank you, Mr. Gowans. <clears throat> Having no more questions or submissions, I'll move on to items for noting. Does any councillor have any questions or comments with the items for noting? No questions. Officer recommendation is that council notes this report. Do I have a mover? Happy to move, Mr. Mayor. Move, Councillor Clark. Seconded, Councillor Ferrari. All those in favour? Thank you. Passed. Uh, item 13, economic development and tourism. Beaufort Lake Caravan Park report. Mr. Nolan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present to Council uh, the recommendations of an operational review of the Beaufort Lake Caravan Park for, for uh, consideration and to seek endorsement for a funding application that has been lodged. Um, in 2013, a master plan was undertaken for the Caravan Park at Beaufort. Um, and a number of the uh, recommended implementation measures have been undertaken. These include upgrade of power heads, uh, water points, and the installation of three cabins. Um, and uh, in uh, 2021, uh, Innoviv, a, a company was engaged to undertake a review, um, which was completed in January, 2022. Um, that uh, review, which has been circulated to councillors, uh, it's uh, not entirely a public document at this stage because it contains uh, a significant amount of benchmarking with other caravan park uh, facilities uh, that might uh, reasonably be considered commercial in confidence. However, uh, that review provided a number of recommendations to assist council in understanding how to uh, uh, better improve the way in which the uh, park is uh, presented and also managed. Uh, the recommendations included recommendations around uh, booking accommodation uh, via online booking, um, uh, marketing strategy to, uh, to use social media and other marketing opportunities to uh, increase the amount of um, uh, bookings, um, and then substantial asset renewal uh, to uh, replace some of the assets that are now quite dated and in need of replacement. Um, in response to the master plan, there is an opportunity for Council to uh, seek some funding through the Commonwealth uh, Government's Building Better Regions Fund. Um, an application has been prepared and submitted uh, for a project of $2 million, uh, seeking a grant of $1 million with 50% co-contribution uh, co -contribution from Council. Um, under normal circumstances, uh, this report will come to Council before the funding application was submitted um, uh, for council indoor, uh, Council's um, uh, recommendation. Um, uh, the, there was insufficient time between the, uh, the report being completed and funding submissions being due. And so uh, following com um, um, discussions uh, at a Council briefing, um, it was uh, uh, determined appropriate to be able to submit this uh, application and, um, and now we're seeking Council's endorsement for the application having been submitted. The, uh, the upgrades to the uh, facility that are included within the funding application include um, road upgrades uh, within uh, the Cowboy Park uh, area, um, a replacement of the um, amenities and uh, a new amenities block and camp kitchen to be constructed uh, centrally within the park. Um, also to provide additional accommodation facilities, um, namely three units and a number of other um, uh, powered sites, including around about 31 powered sites, as well as some uh, upgrade to sewer and power, power and uh, demolition um, of uh, some of the aging infrastructure there, which includes um, old amenities that were constructed more than 50 years ago and uh, were deemed to be in poor condition and needing replacement. The, um, 
the uh, the application for funding uh, is um, is consistent with the council plan, which seeks to support business and to uh, and to strengthen key industry sectors, including the visit visitor economy. Um, it's consistent with the economic development strategy, uh, which uh, seeks to attract new residents, visitors, and investment to the to the Pyrenees, and consistent with Victorian government's visitor economy recovery and reform plan, which seeks to strengthen the tourism offerings within uh, rural communities. Um, many of the park assets are in, um, uh, in poor condition and no longer meeting the expectations of caravan park users. And so it is timely that council um, uh, considers um, a, a substantive um, upgrade of those facilities. Council, this is a substantial uh, financial uh, commitment by Council, and uh, it is intended that um, a Council um, uh, is recommended that Council uh, seek uh, additional funding support from state government and other partners. Um, and in conclusion, um, the, the Caravan Park is performing below its potential um, based on the current standard of assets. Um, many of the existing assets, such as the amenities block, the en-suites, the cabins are over 50 years old in poor condition. Uh, funding is currently available through the Commonwealth BBRF program and, uh, um, and council is um, uh, requested to confirm that it will match the Commonwealth's investment in the project if the funding application is successful. Um, and the recommendation is that uh, firstly, council endorses in principle both at Caravan Park uh, operational review undertaken by Innoviv and, and its recommendations, uh, that it endorses the application for funding under Building Better Regions Fund Round 6 for infrastructure improvements uh, to the Caravan Park and commits to meet the co-contribution of $1 million, that Council investigates other funding partners, including the State Government, to assist in meeting the co-contribution amount, and that Council gives further consideration to the management options contained in the operational review once the outcome of the BBRF funding application is known. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Councillors, we have a recommendation in front of us. Do I have a mover? Moved, Councillor Ferrari. Seconded. Councillor Clark. Councillor Ferrari. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it was uh, it's really uh, time for this it's timely for this review because when you actually look at the park from a distance it looks okay but when you have a close a closer inspection at some of those amenities they're certainly showing their age and deterioration so um, it's really timely um, the, the room factors uh, is uh, always been an issue up there and uh, that's hence why a really good comprehensive plan uh, is is with a with a really good uh, solid strategies is required, and I perhaps just got a question for Mr. Nolan um, in relation to the plan. Um, that would be I'm taking it, Mr. Nolan, that that would be uh, being compiled in conjunction with the uh, Goldfields Recreation Reserve Master Plan and the uh, works that are being undertaken on the Beaufort Lake foreshore. Uh, thanks for your question, Councillor Ferrari. Um, the, uh, the master plan uh, and the detail within the master plan will be subject to uh, consultation with a range of stakeholders. And uh, you're quite right in that the master plan for the rec reserve is also uh, on the agenda. So uh, it would be appropriate to do those in, uh, um, in collaboration with each other. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. And I just want to uh, further add that it's important that uh, if we, we you know, we're, we're thinking that both at some stage may get bypassed. So we really need to make those um, attractions attractive. And uh, if those amenities are attractive, um, and, uh, and of course they've got to comply with regulations. And a lot of times the way you have to do that is put new ones here, it's that simple. But if we do it right, I'm sure we're gonna encourage many return visits and that's what ultimately that we, uh, we're after and bring, uh, bring business to both. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferrari. Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just ask a question of Mr. Nolan first, please? Just, just to confirm recommendation two, which talks about the contribution, Councillor, for me, and which 
makes sense to me in the, in the context of the grant application, but that effectively doesn't, as, as it says later in the grant, preclude us from getting other funds that can go towards that $1 million. That's, that, that's the meaning of those further parts of the recommendation, Mr Nolan? Yeah, that's correct, uh, Councillor Clark. Uh, the timing didn't allow us to be able to secure the state uh, contribution or any state contribution towards this because the the, uh, uh, the state grant programs weren't uh, able to be secured in uh, ahead of this application going in. So it doesn't preclude us from uh, seeking uh, support from the state. Thank you very much. Uh, so just like Councillor Ferrari, I, I'm very mindful that when you look, the, the further away you get, the better that the caravan park does look at the moment. When you do get a bit closer, it, it does it does need a bit of love and care. And I think, as you say, it needs a little bit of strategy about what's the best utilisation of the land we've got. Uh, one, of the, one of the challenges we have is that it is, it is relatively constrained by the other uses around it. Um, so fully support the master plan and fully support us investing some money in this. It's a really important part, I think, of the future economic development of that southern part of the Shire. So, yeah, it certainly has my support. Thanks, Councillor Clark. Any other councillors? No. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Carried. 13.2. Brewster Wind Farm. Mr. Gowans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the purpose of this report is to inform Council that the Brewster Wind Farm facility planning application is currently on exhibition through a process run by the Victorian State Government and for Council to consider making a submission based on community concerns and potential impacts on Council controlled assets. In April last year, RE Futures submitted an application to the state seeking to develop a wind energy facility in the location of Brewster that initially comprised of four turbines on properties bordering the southern side of the Western Highway, west of Trawalla Road and east of Cayley's Lane. Council was briefed by RE Futures uh, early in 2021 regarding their intentions to develop the wind energy facility Council is not a decision maker for the approval of wind farms, and this role is wholly undertaken by the state government through the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. And the final approval is a ministerial decision. Council does have the opportunity to provide a submission during the exhibition phase of the planning process. In briefings with RE Futures, Council did express interest in how the community would be consulted and how impacts were planned to be mitigated. Submissions are due uh, by the 28th of February uh, this year. The planning application was placed on exhibition on the 13th of January um, this year, and the application now indicates that the planned wind energy facility has seven turbines. Offsite impacts are potentially greater under new legislation in involving impacts of non-host landowners. Previously permitted users may now have a trigger for a planning permit and referral to the wind energy facility operator for properties within one kilometre from the boundary of properties that are hosting turbines. Council has recently had representation from potentially impacted community members who have raised a whole range of concerns um, about various impacts associated with wind energy facilities. The concerns range from impacts associated with visual amenity, potential noise impacts, environmental impacts, safety impacts associated with the Western Highway um, relating to shadow flicker, and a whole range of other um, uh, issues that the community have raised. Of major concern is the perceived lack of transparent consultation, which has recently been evidenced by the change in number of tur uh, turbine numbers. There is an opportunity to make a submission and it is proposed that a council submission seeks to ensure that community impacts are limited and that the proposal provides an overall net benefit to the community for it to be supported by council. Therefore, it's the officer recommendation that council prepares a submission on the planning permit application for the Brewster Wind Energy Facility that seeks to represent community concerns and mitigate any impacts to council controlled assets. 
Councillors, we have a recommendation in front of us. Do I have a mover? Moved Councillor Clark, seconded Councillor Keogh. Uh, Councillor Clark. Mr Mayor, can I, can I move a, an amendment, or well, sorry, not an amendment, an alternate, which is the recommendation as is presented in the officer's report, but to add another recommendation to that, please? Certainly, Councillor. What's your recommendation? And that would read that Council write to the Minister of Planning requesting a one-month extension to the statutory period for submissions to this project. Councillor Keogh, do you second that additional motion? Thank you. Uh, all those in favour of the amended motion? I, oh, no, we can have the debate, I think, Mr Mayor, before we vote, please. OK, I thought we... We accepted the amendment and then we would devote it. But go ahead, Councillor Clark. Yeah, well, it, no, no, it's, it's not an amendment. It really is just, just now something that's moved. So that's okay. Okay, fine. With the support of Councillor Clark, thank you. So, Mr Mayor, I think there's a number of us to use the euphemistic Australian term being caught with our pants down about this one and not of our own making uh, in the sense of things. As I understand what's happened here, uh, the company has lodged an application last year for four turbines, but that hasn't progressed because council certainly didn't get a notification about that. It's then gone and lodged a new application or an, called a new application for the sake of it for a seven turbine project at the end of January. The, it's, it's then written to the local landholders to tell them that, guess what, we've increased this project from four to seven turbines. And in that, I would think because it's increased to seven, it's, incre it's, it's actually brought in a whole range of new landholders who probably had no contact with this project. And the very first they've heard about this project is about a week later when they get a letter in the mail from the department giving them this great news. Uh, council at that point in time, one week into the statutory consultation process, was completely unaware that there'd been an application lodged, let alone an application for seven turbines. So we're now two weeks into the process and council's really only had one chance quite briefly to meet and have some discussion around that. And thankfully, the, the, the affected landholders have been able to come and see us today and share with us some of their concerns. So that has helped to inform us in the process. But I certainly feel very ill-equipped as a councillor to deal with the 20-odd documents and give them due consideration and actually get a submission in by the 28th of February. And I have professional staff to help me in the context of council. So I don't know how the community feel, but they must be feeling pretty awful. So I think it is only right that we point out to the minister the absolute way in which this has been handled and the, the, the consultation simply around this part of the process, the formal part of the process in the least, um, and seek an extension for a, further, for a further month in the context of that to give the community a decent amount of time to actually digest the documents, understand the project and make meaningful submissions as well as council to do the same. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Keogh. Thank you for that. And I certainly second what uh, Councillor Clark has said. This has been a been quite a crazy process and, and the time uh, given has certainly not been adequate for ourselves and certainly not for those landowners. So hopefully um, we're able that, that um, we're able to bring about a, a solution for that. But I just think, I just to reinforce everything Councillor Clark has said, um, that we can really use this submission to represent uh, our residents to the best of our ability in this situation that uh, we find ourselves in. So thank you for that. Very happy to second that. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Vance. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, it concerns me greatly that I found out about the extension of three turbines to the original application uh, by one of the landowners last week. Uh, as I understand it, council weren't notified. And I just do not think that this company that's proposing this uh, wind farm uh, acting in very good uh, sense of communication with not only the community and the affected landowners, but council as well. And I certainly endorse the uh, 
request for a further extension of 28 days. There must be uh, numerous landowners affected with the extension of the further three turbines and the area, and also the changing on the run of uh, the fact that now outside the footprint of the wind farm, there's a further one kilometer added to uh, areas that require permits for any further improvements that landowners may wish to make. So they have uh, many reasons to object. And uh, I'm sure that uh, if the minister is of uh, the right mind, he'll give the extension. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vance. Any other? I was terribly disappointed today listening to the community and the things that were passed on to council. As Councillor Clark said, we have professional people to assist us to bring this information to our attention to help us digest it. But it seems any member of the community is not afforded similar like assistance from the proponent of the wind farm. So I think the additional time is valid. I think the minister needs to understand how the community is feeling. And I hope the message comes through loud and clear from their submissions and from ours, that there has been very poor communication across the 12 months that I've known about the project, when it almost doubles and is submitted as an application. Councillors, all those in favour? Thank you. Beaufort Bypass, Environmental Effects Statement Exhibition. Mr Gowans. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is for Council to consider preparing a submission in relation to the recently announced ministerial approval of the Beaufort Bypass Environmental Effects Statement being approved to go on exhibition. Regional Roads Victoria have notified um, in its most recent update that the Minister for Planning has authorised for the Environmental Effects Statement and Draft Planning Scheme Amendment to be placed on public exhibition. Documentation will contain findings of environmental studies and technical investigations completed on all bypass route options since planning began in 2015. There will be an opportunity for individuals and council to make formal submissions on the project. RRV is currently working with the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning and Panel, Planning Panels Victoria to confirm specific dates and timeframes of the public exhibition and notify when they are known. Areas of focus for council submission can include um, issues to do with economic impact, including to businesses depending upon passing trade, social impacts, impact on local road use, access to the freeway and into town, uh, amenity impacts, uh, drainage issues, land use considerations, and opportunities to mitigate impacts. And there may be a whole range of other issues that council may wish to include in its submission. The Beaufort Bypass has the potential to improve road safety, transport efficiency, and provide opportunities for township improvements. All impacts need to be mitigated and council can use the opportunity through a submission to advocate for community needs. Therefore, it's the officer's recommendation that council prepares a submission to the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning in response to the environmental effects statement investigation for a potential Western Highway bypass of Beaufort once the EES has been placed on public exhibition and to ensure that community impacts are mitigated. Thank you, Mr. Gowns. We have a motion, councillors. Do I have a motion? Happy to move, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Vance, seconded. Councillor Clark, any discussion, Councillor Vance? Well, only to say that this is our opportunity to make sure that we get it right. It's common knowledge now, I believe, that uh, the bypass is going to happen and 
It only happens once, so councillor have got to cover every uh, I and cross the T's and make sure that we put every effort into getting it correct and this is the way around it. <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Vance. Councillor Clark? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. This does feel like it's been a bit of a long journey, but that's just the reality. I Certainly having sat in on the process while I was the Mayor, um, I have full, full um, respect for the people who've done the work. It has been diligent and it has been thorough but it now has to have a test with community. And I think that's most appropriate in the process that we do that. And we, we, we listen to those concerns as well. And we make a submission. So yeah, this is, this is just the next stage in the process for council and community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to Council Clark. Any other councillors? Councillor Ferrari. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as uh, Councillor Clark said, this is just the one stage and, you know, whole stage is yet to come, but I think it's a really true reminder that with the uh, AES about to go on display, uh, it's a real reminder for the Beaufort community and surrounds to know that we are going to get bypassed. And we've been talking about bypass ready for a long, long time. So it's really, really important that they do turn their minds to that. And it's really important that we all work together, the council and the community work together to achieve the best outcomes and make sure that both is left with the appropriate legacies when the bypass actually happens. And the only way we can do that is put any differences aside and work very, very closely together to make sure we get the best for Beaufort and surrounds. Thank you, Councillor Ferrari. Anyone else? I feel the, this is a major step in the process that we finally got something documentary that we can actually put there in front of the community. The community can have a long, hard look at it and uh, with us make submissions if they wish, but they've got a much better understanding of what's in front of them. When the bypass starts and begins, it's incumbent on council to have preparations in place for the township of Beaufort to be able to prosper and grow with the bypass. So I support this going on exhibition and I support anybody who is interested in the bypass to take full note of these documentations and make themselves aware of what's being offered. Councillors, we have a recommendation. All those in favour? Carry. Thank you. Extension of contract for the cleaning services. Mr. Gowans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this report is to advise council on the Avoca cleaning contract and the Beaufort cleaning contract, which have completed the contract period and to seek endorsement to enter into two year extensions for each contractor. The Avoca Area clean, Cleaning Contract was awarded to Australian Commercial Maintenance Proprietary Limited and commenced from the 1st of January 2019 for a period of three years, uh, ending on the 31st of December 2021. The Beaufort Clinic Cleaning Contract was also um, awarded for that same period to BG Corporate Services Proprietary Limited. Both contracts allow for an extension of contract for up to three one-year extensions. Both cleaning contractors have adjusted their cleaning obligations as directed by council during the previous two years of the pandemic to meet state government requirements to provide extra cleaning to combat the spread of COVID, the COVID-19 virus. Both cleaning contractors have performed satisfactorily in their duties as required through the contract. Both contractors have agreed in principle to continue the cleaning services for an additional two years, which is what is being recommended by officers. Therefore, the officer recommendation uh, reflects that, that council approves the two year extensions uh, for contracts C2018-007, Avoca Cleaning to Australian Commercial Maintenance and contract C2018, uh, slash 008, both a clean contract to BG Corporate Services. Thank you, Mr. Gowns. Councillors, we have a 
recommendation? Do I have a mover? Councillor Clark, seconded Councillor Keogh. Councillor Clark? No, Councillor Keogh? Thank you, Mr. Gowans. Um, it's nice to know that we have these contracts in place and that the uh, process goes on unabated. Councillors, all those in favour? Carry. Thank you. Council plan progress updates. Ms. Bramwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide Council with a progress um, report on actions planned to de deliver the strategic goals and priorities identified in the Council plan. Um, council adopted the Council plan at its ordinary meeting on 19th of October 2021, and the plan outlines how Council will work towards implementing the 10 year community vision. The council plan was informed by the community vision and is framed around four strategic priorities, uh, namely people, place, environment and economy, plus enabling principles. Uh, the attached reporting document is designed to align operational objectives and actions with delivering the Pyrenees Shire Council plan. Uh, the operational plan will be reviewed annually alongside reviews of the council plan to maintain alignment uh, with the plan and the community vision. Outcomes of the plan will be monitored and measured in accordance with the measures included in the council plan and reporting to council and community will be undertaken as part of the quarterly council plan reporting. Uh, this first report against the council plan has been structured to provide an outline of operational activities with no detailed update on progress as yet. Future quarterly reports will be structured like uh, previous years utilising symbols and brief commentary to provide a progress snapshot. Where Council's goal has not been translated into an operational project or activity, this means that the goal itself is transferred into being the operational activity. And it's therefore Council's uh, officer's recommendation that Council rece receives a Council plan progress report as of the end of December 2021 detailing the operational projects and priorities aimed at delivering the plan over the, this current year and next calendar year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bramwell. Moved, Councillor Clark. No. Seconded, Councillor Vance. Councillor Clark. So, Mr. Mayor, just to confirm, Ms. Bramwell, that the recommendation that's printed in the Council agenda actually says 2020, but it is supposed to be 20, December 2021, isn't it? Yes, that's right. It was we there. Make sure that's, that's the correct one. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. That's all from me. Councillor Vance? No. Uh, uh, any other councillors? All those in favour? Thank you, councillors. Quarterly finance report, Ms. Bramwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide council with an update on the financial performance for the period 1st of July, 2021 to the 31st of December, 2021. Uh, the provision of regular port reports on council's financial performance ensures that um, the council administration financial management and associated processes remain accountable, transparent and responsible. The attached financial report um, is a component of ensuring the accountability of Council's operations. In line with good governance, it forms part of the public accountability process and reporting. A mid-year review was carried out recently to determine the requirement um, as to whether a mid-year budget review was required and any significant financial risks to Council. At this stage, it's considered there is no requirement to complete a mid-year review and that there are no significant financial risks. It is anticipated that Council will complete the year with a 7.799 million cash balance being an increase of just under 1.1 uh, million. The forecast position will continue to be monitored considering any issues that may arise during the remainder of the year. And following the, um, the 
risk assessment of whether we need a mid-year review. Uh, there's no considered no requirement to prepare a revised budget for this year either. There, there are a couple of tables in, uh, detailed in the report that one which summarizes the financial performance uh, for the first six months of the financial year. And the second one, which sum summarizes the forecast financial position um, for the cap uh, financial year end. And the current forecasts indicate a positive financial performance for the 2021-22 financial year. It's therefore the officer's recommendation that council receives and notes the financial performance report for the period 1st of July to the 31st of December 2021. And again, that's an error in the report there, I apologize. And the projected forecasts for the year. And notes the CEO declaration that pursuant to section 97.3 of the Local Government Act, there is no requirement that the Pirinisha Council prepare a revised budget. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bramwell. Do I have a mover, please? Moved Councillor Vance, seconded. Councillor Keogh, Councillor Vance. Uh, uh, only to uh, remind Ms. Bramwell that she has referred to 2020 in the, in the uh, graphs that have been presented to Council, and I'm sure that should be 2021. Yes. And also, uh, December 2022, not 2020. You don't go backwards, I hope. Yeah. But otherwise, no, uh, just to thank uh, just, uh, Kellyo for that report and uh, to say that we did actually meet Mr. Kellyo for the first time. He's a new employee at Council and I'd like to formally welcome him if he's watching tonight. It's nice to know that we've been able to fulfill that position left uh, vacant by James, who done a great job for us. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Vance. Councillor Keogh? Uh, no, but I'd like to second that welcome and to thank um, Mr Kellyo for getting that report up so quickly. Thank you. Any other councillors? Councillor Clark? Just, just one question, Ms Bramwell, please, Mr Mayor. So I note, Ms Bramwell, in the, in the capital works, we're certainly projecting that we'll have everything done by the end of the year, but we are about 20% behind budget at this stage. Is there anything specific in a project context that's causing that, or is it just um, general things that are just not quite running to time as we projected? I'll have to take that question. Sorry, through you, Mr Mayor. I'm afraid, and thanks for the question, Councillor Clark. I'll have to take that question on notice because I'm not actually sure, but I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We have a recommendation before us. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much. Community Sports Lighting found Funding Application. Mr Nolan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to seek Council's endorsement for a funding applica application submitted under the uh, Local Sports Infrastructure Fund for Community Sports Lighting for the Beaufort Goldfields Recreation Reserve. Uh, an application has recently been submitted under that program and uh, the report outlines some of the background to the application. Uh, this uh, component is part of a larger, very considerable investigation and planning work over five recreation reserves across the Shire involving uh, Avoca, Beaufort, Lexton, Snake Valley and Warbra. Uh, that investigation involved engaging an expert in the field to determine the uh, power and lighting needs for future use at these facilities uh, in the longer term. Uh, the total investment required to undertake the power upgrades and the lighting at these reserves uh, to meet current standards um, uh, for sports playing and for other community activities at these reserves is in the order of $4 million. Uh, Council's previously resolved to allocate $230 from the Commonwealth's Local Road Community Infrastructure Fund uh, phase three to undertake a stage of the power upgrade at the Beaufort Rec Reserve. Um, and while five sites are considered important to council, the Beaufort site was considered a priority for, the, for this application ahead of other reserves 
that were part of the investigation because the level of participation and the proximity to residences, which is an issue in terms of a criteria needed to be met under the fund uh, and the impact of uh, lighting on uh, residential development and the ability to meet the funding criteria. If successful, the infrastructure upgrade will require a financial contribution from council and other funding partners to come on board. The, uh, the total cost of, the pro, of, of this component of the project, uh, which is the, uh, the lighting upgrade and the power upgrade at the Recreation Reserve is $765,000. Um, of which 230 is funded under the Commonwealth program and seeking 250,000 to be funded under this uh, sports lighting program, leaving a balance of 285,000 approximately to be met from council and other funding partners. Um, in the absence of other funding, the balance would need to be budgeted by council as part of its allocation for capital recreation over the coming two financial years. It is intended that the unfunded component and the upgrades at the other sites form part of a major advocacy pitch to government over coming months. Um, and a detailed cost estimate of this component of the project has been provided. Um, in conclusion, uh, and uh, councillors, I provide uh, the following recommendation that council endorses the funding application made for community sports lighting for the Beaufort Goldfields Recreation Reserve and includes provision for financial contribution in future budgets. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Do I have a recommendation, <coughs> councillors? Do I have a mover? Moved Councillor Clark. Seconded Councillor Ferrari. Councillor Clark. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think very much as Mr. Nolan has said, we've got five of these and they're all important, but the only way you can get these things done is by starting and having a crack. And that's what we're going to do with both at first. And I'm sure we'll follow as quickly as we can with the others. So fully support the project. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Ferrari? No. Any other councillor? I support Councillor Clark's comments. We, we can't do it all at once. We've got to do it financially responsibly and We've got to start somewhere. This is the first one. Councillors, all those in favour? Carry. Thank you. Councillor reports and general business. Starting alphabetically from the top, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Mr Mayor. If I could deal with an item of general business first, please, if... if uh, at your discretion, and that is, I've had certainly a number of representations from community at Lexton about the status of the community hub that, that council, of course, has been building, which is a fantastic facility. Uh, and as we, I understand it, the facility is all but complete, um, but however, it can't be occupied yet because there are some things that still need to be done. Uh, Mr. Nolan, could I ask you please for an update of that situation, whether there is, and I think the second part to that is whether there's anything that we as a council um, need to do to support you in the process of bringing this project to a conclusion, please. Uh, look, thank you, Councillor Clark, for the question and... Um... Um, I have actually, we have, we are in the process of preparing a media statement, which we'll look to uh, release and it might uh, be um, perhaps easier for me to, uh, to read from that media statement that will help to answer your question and provide some context uh, to the community about where the, where the hub is at. Um, so I'll start um, Certainly, the, uh, by providing a little bit of context and history for those that are not aware of the, the, the nature of the project, uh, the Lexton Community Hub is a purpose built multi use space with a multi purpose, uh, a multi purpose function room, change rooms, bar, canteen, and commercial kitchen, which will cater for a range of community and sporting needs and which will replace outdated facilities now at the end of their useful life. Uh, 
To bring this project to fruition, Council undertook an extensive community engagement, feasibility planning and advocacy over five years and secured significant funding from state, federal governments and the local community, with Council also contributing to the cost of the project. Ballarat-based architect firm Morton Dunn was engaged to design the facility uh, and Collins Engineering were appointed as the project manager. In September 2020, Ballarat-based company SJ Weir was awarded the contract for construction. While work on the uh, three substantive buildings, uh, the car park and the surrounds, uh, was completed uh, and has, as at uh, uh, December 2021 has been substantially completed, there have been some delays in the installation of the wastewater treatment system. At Lexton, uh, Lexton is an unsewered township. Wastewater must be treated on site with separate systems. Size of the community hub and its ability to cater for multi-purpose concurrent sporting activities and community events. Uh, with a significant number of uh, toilets, showers, uh, commercial kitchen with fixtures uh, to meet design standards and modern community facilities uh, with female friendly change facilities. This triggers the need for a, a substantial 5,000 litre per day treatment system. Uh, systems of this size must have the Environment Protection uh, Authority uh, approval before installation. Arist Water Treatment and Technology was engaged uh, in May 2021 to provide a detailed design and specifications to meet the requirements of the EPA. Uh, Aris is a Queensland-based company with extensive experience in wastewater treatment systems and was recommended as having appropriate capability for this task. At the time, an alternative design and construct proposal was obtained from another company but the proposal exceeded the council budget uh, and the engineer's estimate, and therefore that, pro that um, uh, proposal was rejected at the time. Engagement between ARIS and the project manager uh, for the design and specification was impacted by a number of factors during 2021, which resulted in the delay in the completion of the detailed design specification, which I'm happy to say has now been received and, uh, uh, and is awaiting formal acceptance by the EPA. Subject to that acceptance, procurement of the treatment tank, the wastewater treatment field components, uh, the system construction will be undertaken during February to April. The estimated cost of the wastewater treatment system is in the order of $200,000, which is in line with the, uh, the uh, original estimate. Uh, with the total project cost estimate uh, around $3.8 million. Council appreciates that the delay with the wastewater treatment system has meant a delay in the handover to the community. And for that, uh, uh, we, um, we are very sorry. And um, uh, however, it is an essential element of a functioning community hub, which will be a lasting asset to the Lexton community for many years to come. And Councillor Clark, just in respect of your second uh, question, at this point in time, I don't believe there's anything further that uh, the council can do to support uh, officers and um, our contractors at this stage. Um, there is a lot of work being done behind the scenes to, uh, to bring this to fruition, particularly um, thanks to our recently appointed uh, assets manager, uh, Tim Day, who is uh, doing a lot of work with the, the range of uh, consultants and agencies that are involved in this at this point in time. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. And I understand by what you've said about a, a media release that obviously you're intending to rele release that information to the community fairly in, in the very near future. Thank That's you. Correct, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, oh, I'd better go on to my report, had not silly me. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, um, so, Mr. Mayor, just to add to my written report in the thing, um, I've been able to get out and about around councils with my other MAV responsibilities. And uh, I got over to West Wimmera in the middle of January to visit over where they'd had a fire. And for those of us that listened to the ABC, that was reported that the fire started in South Australia. Uh, you had burned about 6,000 hectares in Victoria. It actually started in South Australia by about 
oh, probably about the length of two two steps. Um, it actually started where they had where they actually had their police um, roadblocks on the main the main road, is basically where it started. So it pretty much it really didn't burn anything in South Australia of any note whatsoever. It just all burned in Victoria. But uh, the council had done a terrific job there, stepping up. They had about five thousand sheep to have to. Uh, help put down and things like that. And the council had that all dealt with within a couple of days. So they did a really good job supporting the community along with bushfire recovery in Victoria. Um, I also got down to visit some of the metropolitan councils in Bayside, Cardinia and, and Kingston, which was very interesting and different in that sense. It's really interesting to go to Cardinia, which is kind of Kui Rup um, around that area, um, basically packing them and bit beyond Berwick in that kind of sense of thing and see hay bales in one paddock and houses on the other side of the road. It's completely like there's just development beyond imagination for us up here. Uh, but finally, I also I went up along the river and visited Camp Paspi Ganawara uh, and Loddon Shires uh, about two weeks ago. And again, they're very similar to us. They're dealing with a lot of the challenges that we are, particularly around the constraint on funding. Uh, cumulative, those those councils have nearly 15 pools among them that they're trying to work out how the heck do they resource them and support them. They're all a bit like our Beaufort pool or our Boca pool. They're probably about 50 years old. And it's not just the operational cost. It's actually the, the, the capital cost of maintaining them that's a really key challenge for those councils. So uh, I think we're moving into that same situation where we'll need to look pretty sharply at some costs and services in this budget and that's just the reality of council in this current environment so that's where we're at that's all for me thank you mr mayor thank you councillor clark um, are you suggesting that we might be able to send the bill to the south australian government for any damages of the fire or uh, the the mayor of west rumor had a really interesting map that had a kind of bit of a bend in the border and he was going to try his luck Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Ferrari. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, had the usual council briefing sessions and uh, the dinner with the Australia Day ambassador and of course the Australia Day event out at uh, Warborough, which was a fantastic day. Um, I thought the, uh, the our ambassador was quite an interesting fellow and uh, I, I did actually, uh, enjoy his speech um, he's pretty much straight to the point but I, I'm, I'm confident that he said some things that a lot of people are thinking so I thought it was pretty uh, bold and brave of him but um, I think he's pretty much on the mark from my perspective anyway and I thought it was really well done and um, thank you to all that uh, to, to Warber and thank you to all the um, council staff that organised the day because a lot of work goes into those days uh, and uh, it's just a credit to everyone that chips in and gets it done and it was a great success um had a couple of meetings b for b meeting um uh, we've got some further meetings scheduled for that and they're going to put a bit of a plan together to uh work out what projects they can undertake moving forward and um you know as i've said on a number of occasions they need to work with the council too so that we're working side by side rather than uh you know pulling at each other's um belt uh, coat tail. So um, that's good. I had a meeting with BPS 60 um, that's ongoing. And uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for um, reading out my uh, uh, narrative on the youth the other day. I couldn't attend because I was uh, unfortunately uh, isolating from COVID, but I thank you for doing that. And I encourage the community members to uh, get behind a petition that's going around and sign that because the more, uh, more, more signatures Obviously, the more weight it um, will be will carry when it's um, submitted to the government or submitted to parliament. I uh, had some constituent meetings and discussions, particularly around the pool, Bowford pool, as we've talked. Um, uh, there's been some, a few ongoing issues there. It's not ever easy. <clears throat> and of course, lots of times these issues come up not on off season, but uh, at, on 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 season when we are when we go to fire things up and we find things happen and. We, there's a few um, few teething problems, but anyway, uh, I thank the council again for working through those issues. issues. Uh, a couple of roadside slashing issues. Um, I had some discussions with Mr Nolan and um, he got onto that pretty much straight away and, and uh, kept a couple of people happy, which was good. And, um, and, and it is, of course, it's all that safety issue. 
Uh, and just a couple of other um, discussions around the Band Tunda and uh, the Lake Project. And uh, finally, I'd just like to congratulate all the uh, recipients of the Australia Day Awards this year. We had some extra ones in there. Uh, they're all very, very worthy uh, winners. I know there's others out about in the community that uh, are worthy as well. So next year, please nominate them. And, uh, you know, we can only have one at a time. Or in fact, this year we didn't. We we diversed a little bit and we uh, we had a couple of different uh, categories and a couple of different winners. But uh, Linnell Day, who got the Australian the year, or Australia Day Ambassador, for, or Australia Day for the... Um, for the uh, Pyrenees uh, was a very worthy winner and um, not just she does so much for the community not just in the sporting arena but over the years uh, certainly for the general community so I congratulate Linnell a very worthy winner. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Ferrari. Councillor Keogh. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, I was able to attend Australia Day and again, a huge thank you to the Warburg community and all the volunteers who put in such a great effort for such a wonderful day, right from um, young and old. There was a lot to, to be had and to experience and it was just wonderful. It's a, it's a lot of effort and again, staff that do put into that as well. And it was an honour again, as um, Councillor Ferrari has just mentioned, to witness those award recipients really well, well worthy one uh, people like Linnell and also um, those you know the the uh, just a, a great array of people that are involved in helping others in the community the food pantry and the young girl who was in the CFA it's just um, it was just wonderful so very a fantastic day um, on the CFA note a huge thank you to our local CFA groups um, their vigilance over the last few weeks and months in protecting our community there's been a few blazes that have occurred and, and they've prevented that becoming a, a greater um, a greater uh, d disaster. They've been really wonderful. So we thank you for the um, having to all those call outs again and again. Um, we really are blessed with those groups. Um, I uh, was also in isolation for the BPS 60 meeting that that occurred on the weekend. But congratulations to that community um, team. The the school has got such a special place in many of our hearts, and um, and those it's such a, a, a beautiful thing. And and it, uh, you know to get behind them as Councillor Ferrari is urging the community, please do um, because this would be a fantastic project. Um, for a number of reasons and the way it can support a number of people across the community. I was also in isolation when the ag, summer ag show was in action and again I'd like to congratulate that team again it was a different uh, sort of a, a, um, a, a summer show which is quite different to the normal one but still with the fantastic attendance particularly in those horse and dog trials and the wood cutting event. So congratulations to all those people who participated, um, but very much to the team that made that happen. Um, on the COVID issue, again, please continue to protect yourself and to protect others. Um, there's been, I've heard so many wonderful stories and in instances where people are um, being able to get groceries and things for people who are isolating. Um, thank you to those people who are isolating. It can be difficult. It can be difficult with children, um, with work, um, but everyone's banding together, whether that's workmates or whether that's teachers providing work for the students, um, everyone from, from everyone around and all the people at the supermarket being able to package groceries to deliver them, all those people that are going to extra effort, that's what's keeping our community going and, um, and we really do thank you for that. So um, keep well everyone and, and stick together through this next stage. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keogh. Councillor Vance. Councillor Vance, you are on mute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure what Councillor Keogh uh, in, in intentions are with the next phase, but I hope it's the last phase. We've absolutely been swamped with COVID and uh, I guess in my end of the world, I didn't think it would ever come to the little town of Lansborough, but we've had it this year also. So uh, the triple jab's the way to go, I believe. So uh, for those that are still non-believers, really... I don't understand it. I uh, also attended the meal with Claude Lombard, our guest speaker on Australia Day. 
And uh, we had a very in-depth conversation on the Friday night and Claude brought that conversation to the crowd on Australia Day and he didn't hold back. I thought that he was very forthright. He said a lot of things that I believed and a lot of people in the crowd were <laughs> smiling with his comments, but they were agreeing with him also. Um, the pool situation at Landsborough, we finally got our pool going and we, as I understand it, now have a local lifesaver that's able to attend regularly. So that's great. And, um, nice to know that the kids are finally getting the use of that. I uh, reiterate uh, the comments around the CFA. We had a small fire here in Landsborough and Sometimes the uh, fire brigade are taken for granted, but when they jump on a fire and get it out very quickly, it's much appreciated by those people that may well have started the fire and those that are in the line of the fire. The quicker we can get them out of the road, the better. On the 28th of January, I had a rural councils meeting in, once again, uh, a Zoom meeting, which we're now getting used to, thanks to Mother COVID or Brother COVID or whatever we call him. It's uh, a little impersonal, but anyway, it is what it is. We dealt with a lot of in-house uh, matters, but uh, out of the conversation as the day went on, uh, rural councils in the next lead up to the elections are going to have five projects that we're going to uh, direct our attention towards, and that would be housing for people uh, in rural areas and the smaller councils. Roads is always a subject that we like to keep the pressure on the state and federal government for support. We will be targeting uh, financial sustainability for small rural councils. And uh, the aged care situation will also be targeted and lastly, but not least, is climate change. Uh, for some of us that don't believe in being uh, jabbed for COVID, I'm probably one that doesn't, isn't totally convinced that climate change is going to be altered too greatly by what mankind does, other than getting all those jet airplanes out of the sky. That'd be the first move. It's wonderful when you sit here in Lansford, I used to be able to watch four and five and six airplanes every day flying over us. And now you're lucky, it, it's a novelty if you see one. And I, I appreciate the good clear skies and like a cloud from fumes from those jet airplanes that are blowing over the top of us. And the last subject that uh, caused some concern for me was uh, a recommendation from Royal Life Saving Australia that uh, local government be made responsible for control of waterways. Uh, and this is a concern with the new um, area where uh, the state government have introduced where people can camp on waterways. And that brings about the concern of if somebody drowns, council will be held responsible. Well, I'm just not too sure how much responsibility we can bear I, I am a little ignorant to the whole uh, proposal, but it is a fear and uh, it's a question for council we'll need to address into the future. That's my lot. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Vance. Um, I too attended Australia Day and uh, met with the ambassador on both the day before and, and Australia Day. And it was a wonderful event at Marlborough. I, I feel that it went really, really well, which means that the organisers and the workers came together, got it going, it ran beautifully and finished on time. I want to commend all those people involved. They did a great job on the day and previous to that to get it ready for us all. And I hope everybody that was there enjoyed it. I also went to the horse show and realised how small some of the riders are compared to their horse and how proud they are 
sitting up there like Jackie, buck straight so that they could possibly win a ribbon or a cup or whatever's available to them. The smiles on those children's faces, on the adults' faces, they were all competing in some form or another and the organisers were absolutely wonderful. There were horses going every which way and I was fortunate enough to be standing near one of the main organisers who told me, step back, go forward, stay here, whatever was required, because I didn't know where they were going. But they did a wonderful job. The wood chop was great and the dogs were great. So well done to those organisers. I attended a health event in Avoca called Are You Bogged, Mate? Now it's sort of the country version of Are You OK? But the woman concerned just has a way with getting her message across. And she believes it's far, far too important to leave the farming community and the country community out of this project. If you know what I'm talking about, well done. If you don't know what I'm talking about, try and go to Landline on the ABC and watch. They had a program about her and her program, and it is worthwhile. Mental health anywhere, but particularly in the bush, is a very, very big problem. And we need to do everything we can to try and improve it. Congratulations to those people. Went to the <clears throat> community cuppa at Trawalla, where we had a wonderful meeting with a group of people. The uh, main topic was the Brewster Wind Farm, which helped us understand better what the community was thinking and what the community wanted us to do as council. That's the idea behind these cuppers. <clears throat> Excuse me. The community came along, they had councillors there to talk to and the CEO and uh, other members of, count of the officers. And it was very, very worthwhile. It culminated in another meeting today with the Brewster Wind Farm people where many, many more people came along and were able to give us their point of view. Those councillor cuppers are not there just to have a cuppa. They're there to pass on information both ways, us to them and them to us. And sometimes I feel that them to us is far more important. Dan Tien came to the area of Trawalla. Uh, some funds were provided from the Commonwealth Government for re-roofing the hall there. We had a chance to talk to Dan and the hall committee. Uh, we're able to thank him for his funds. But again, it works along the lines of, if you know where to go and get funds, where to ask for funding, these things can happen in your community. Any community within the Pyrenees Shire is quite able to apply for these grants and do so freely. And last but not least, there's been a couple of mentions about pools. Our pools in the Pyrenees Shire have had a rough trot in the early start of this summer. Mechanically speaking, staff wise, and a number of other things. But it's something that we as Shire are trying to get right. It's something that we as a Shire want to run properly for the community. We can't meet all of the issues that are outside our control. It is not something that we are proud of that not being able to run them properly for you, but we are trying to do our best. If you understood the cost involved in running a pool versus the money that actually comes in through the gate, as a business, you would never run a pool. But we continue to run them for the community because that's a community request and wish. So please bear with us. We're trying to get it done to the best of our ability. Thank you very much. I now wish to move 
into confidential items, which means I need a motion to move that the meeting be closed to members of the public in accordance with section 4.1.1C of the council's governance rules and section 66 of the Local Government Act 2020 in order to discuss confidential reports listed for bridge replacements, contracts and complaints. Can Happy I have a move? Move, Councillor Vance, seconded Councillor Keogh. All those in favour? Thank you very much, councillors. Ladies and gentlemen, we will move into closed council. At the end of our deliberations in closed council, we will come back into open council and report on closed council matters. Thank you very much for your attention and we'll see you on the other side of closed council. Thank you very much. And we're live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have um, completed closed council in which we discussed the contract for four bid replacements on uh, various roads within the Pyrenees Shire. It's a total of just over $2.3 million and it's been awarded to Civil and Earth Australia Proprietary Limited. Congratulations to them. We also had a discussion about some, um, gotta make sure I, some complaints that have been forwarded to the Pyrenees Shire. Those complaints have been noted by councillors and we will work through those in the normal course of events. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to us, watching us, whatever you've done. It's been a lovely evening to sit here behind a computer and Zoom this meeting to all of you out there in the internet and wherever. Thank you, councillors. And uh, I will close the meeting at 7.50 p.m. Do I need a... No, I don't.